have we got a treat for you today. We're in the Loire, Loire Valley in, in France. I, I hate using hackneyed words being a wedding planner. Everything's magical, everything's dreamy, everything's fairy tale. But when you look at this, Walt Disney got his inspiration of fairy tale, of, of Disneyland from a French chateau, not that far away from here. This is truly fairy tale. I can use that word here. It is appropriate. This is such a grand house and, and you can do weddings, you know, small intimate parties here to huge events. Um, and if you want that princess fairy tale magical feeling, you can't go wrong here. I'm going to show you around. Salvador's going to take the cameras and we're going to have a lot of fun exploring this place. See you in a minute. Action. We're at the gatehouse. You've seen that magnificent opening with me. Um, it's not the drawbridge, but that's what it feels like. Um, op opening those magnificent doors. Uh, your guests are arriving. We have the church, which is what? 20 meters from me there. And I'm sure we'll cut to the video now of the church. And then this wonderful view of the chateau. Um, as your guests arrive, I'll take you to the first of, uh, if, if not the church, the first of one of many gorgeous ceremony spaces. You've taken this house to have your fairy tale wedding in. So every single thing you do is going to have this magnificent building as a backdrop. And where we're standing here is one of those examples, a ceremony space. So imagine the celebrant or the officiant here, couple, and then maybe if you slide backwards, because what I wanted to show you is that you would have chairs. Can you see me? You have chairs, this side, chairs, that side, all focused onto this space. Now the Another problem with this venue, a problem, problem for me in making a video, that is, another problem for me, not for you, is that there are so many different spaces to do so many different things. This is one of many. You could do ceremony spaces on the grass. We're going to go round now to the pergola on the other side, which is another ceremony space. But we have to talk about appetizer cocktail space, um, which is a two hour high seats and low seats and, and various myriad of sp uh, wonderful spaces. And then we go on to the banquet and then we go on to the dance. After that, I'll talk about the house and the bedrooms um, and welcome dinners, rehearsal dinners and, and other, th other, other amazing things. You're in France here and, and the, the amazing things you could, the activities you can do in France. So we've gone round to another side of the, the opposite side that we, we started over there, the gatehouse. We've done ceremony spaces front and back. And this is an appetizer space. It's quaint. You've got a side view of the house. Uh, a river. I presume this is a river. And this bridge across your river. But imagine high tables, low tables. We've got the house in the background. Do you want to turn it around so you can see the house? Cocktails, appetizers, champagne, sound of the, uh, the water music, I should say. Um, anything else that you need to say? Another space. Oh, you can. You, people have done a dinner, a banqueting, one long table across the bridge.
So we're on the back side of the house, south facing, I believe, because the sun rises over there and sets down there. And this for us is another ceremony space. Um, and we, I'm going to turn around and you're going to see the uh, cupola, the pergola. So again, always with the house in the background, whatever you do, baby, whatever you do, the house is always in the background, wherever you look. It's such a wonderful house. Every time I look at the house, I'm like stunned. Uh, so, again, celebrant, couple, chairs, fanning out, looking in on the ceremony. Um, another wonderful space. Now let's do some banqueting spaces. Well, no, appetizers next, isn't it, darling? The copula, a ceremony space right in front of this grand building, the facade. Um, and we come on to this wonderful space here. This can be carpeted. It can be a banqueting space. It can be uh, appetizer space, cocktail space. It's a great space for musicians, dancing and... And now we do more appetizer spaces. I'm left on my own in front of this building. I cannot help but marvel at it in awe. That's, that's what it's created to do. I am in awe of this Gothic creation. It's wonderful. I brought you over to this space. You have to use your imagination slightly. Um, why? Well, we're in December, just the day before Christmas almost. Isn't it? Yes. Before Christmas? I forget. Christmas Eve. The day before Christmas. So this is December. This is winter. Um, these are hydrangeas. That's a wall of hydrangeas there. Uh, in January, you see these? These have not been headed yet because uh, they do that in January. So um, it gets all the nutrition. If you're a gardener, you'll understand. If you're not, forget about what I'm saying. I'm just going to, it's going to look incredibly pretty with these big hydrangea, hydrangea isn't it? Big hydrangea heads. Um, the color, well, that depends on the acidity of the soil. So that changes from year to year, from light pink to a very vibrant blue. Now imagine leaves on the trees, um, hot summer sun. This is a wonderful area. If you come now, come in and turn around. We've got the church in the background, which you've just seen, but the building here. And imagine this as an appetizer space, as a cocktail space, high tables, low tables. This is my favorite cocktail space, I think. I would do it here, the cocktail. But you can do the banquet here as well, because you've got this magnificent, I could, I could do a banquet here equally, you know? Um, with that backdrop, um, the shade, again, carpeted with the gravel for the ladies in their heels. Uh, You've got the church, you've got all this architecture. You've got gatehouse, coach house, church, another gatehouse. I'm, I'm, I'm stunned. So appetizer here, banquet here, lots of interesting things. You can do, make it quite dreamy and fairy tale. Again, that word, fairy tale, which I generally hate, but in this context, you cannot but help think fairy tale. Another welcome. Please come in. Uh, I can talk about the house. I can talk about many different things, but I just want to finish the flow of the wedding day uh, before we go on to the accommodation and other things. This is the entrance hall of this Gothic romantic building. Um, and this, this, hall is generally converted into the dance. Now the dance has to be, you have to come inside at one o'clock I believe. 
Um, so you can make a lot of noise outside with all the noise facing the building. Um, so speakers facing the building until about one o'clock. But one o'clock, you must definitely come inside. And this could be the, if, if you don't bring it in earlier, this is, this, is the, this is where your party is, this space. So we're gonna have a DJ over there, and you see, and you see the bar in the background. Now the thing is, you see the taxi dermy lines and everything. All this furniture for the party is moved out. Um, and we bring lights in, etc. We can have some chill out on the dance floor and we can have a kind of, I always think primary chill out and secondary chill out. Primary chill out is kind of in the dance floor, high tables, some low tables. Um, and it's about watching your friends get drunk, making fools of themselves, having a good time partying. Here, you're slightly more remote from the music, so it's not so intense. Um, and you've got the bar. Again, high tables, low tables, and some seating. Uh, I suppose we just continue. We don't do the bedrooms, we just do the other spaces in here. Look at details, just details, 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 ceilings, fireplaces. I believe this room, if we clear all the furniture out, it can um, have a banquet in for 80 people. And if you want additional space, we open the doors. And um, for me, it's not so connected, but you can get more people in these rooms in here. But this room can sit 80. Um, there's a library in one of the towers. And to the library. Another one of the towers. Now, have a look in the library and I'll keep talking. This house, this chateau was the architect designed it around the concept of time. Um, it has four towers. We're in one of those towers right now. Have you done the ceiling? And this is the library. Um, and it has four of these, so four seasons. It has 12 turrets, 12 months in the year. It has uh, 24 spiral staircases for every fortnight. I presume that would be waxing and waning of the moon. Come on. It has 52, every week in the year, 52 fireplaces. And believe it or not, it has 365 windows. Now, back to this room. A great space for an intimate dining experience. Uh, depends on the size of your party and what you're doing. We'll go back to the entrance hall. Again, this this used to be uh, this this used to be the billiard room, and that's why that we've got this high chair here, uh, so people could sit in and watch the billiard table. But now we're um, this is the entrance hall, so this is an overspill for the party. This room could be used for something. Uh, yeah, baby. The piano. So this house, this chateau, this castle has, can sleep 50 people. Um, in the main house itself, there are eight suites, and I think they can sleep 22. Just a minute, let me check my notes. It has eight suites. Oh, it can sleep 24 in those eight suites. So let's go and look at the first one on the ground floor. This is the Royal Suite. 
Now, apparently, royalty would sleep on the ground floor. So the more senior you are in the aristocracy, aristocracy was the closer you were to the ground floor. This was Napoleon III's bedroom, apparently, for some time. So this suite uh, connects through with this room. We have a bathroom. And that's shared with this other suite in another one of those four towers. And that's on the ground floor. And those are the only bedrooms on the ground floor. We're in the entrance hall again. We're going to go upstairs and do some more suites. Uh, so look at some bedrooms and the, the exquisite detail uh, there is on this property. Remember I said this place was built on time. We have four towers, 12 turrets and 26 spiral staircases. And what a spiral staircase. Now in the royal suite downstairs, you might remember Napoleon III. That's generally where the boys get ready. All that wooden panelling, all those lovely bits. You know, the wonderful thing about this venue, wherever you point a camera, it is a picture. It's so picturesque, which means it's quite, quite easy work for the cameraman. It's when the venue's not so picturesque, the cameraman has to work twice as hard. Saying that, boys' room downstairs. This is the girls' makeup room, getting ready room. And what a room. Now I'm going to let Salvador wander around and look at suites with the camera. Uh, because there's a lot of bedrooms, a lot of suites. There's seven, we've looked at one suite, there's seven more to do in this building. cloth on the walls. Every room has a different cloth lying. Now, now the, the couple can pick any room as their bridal suite. I guess, I mean, look, they're all magnificent, they're all huge, and they all have views. One of the towers, Golden Towers, is called. And this wonderful room gets the first light in the morning. So if you're an early riser, this is the room for you. Essentially is one wing of the house and we're going over to the other tower on this side. toilets in this tower and the bedroom that uses the Empress Suite.
it's the flock or what I would call a flock or paper. This line, it's my favourite too, it's Salvador's favourite, isn't it? Yes. It's quite burlesque in some ways, a bit. Kind of mood, anyway. The only downsides to this room is in that tower where there was the toilet, this is the room that belongs to that toilet, which is a good 20 metres away. Um, and a couple of rooms in between with their own suites, their own toilet. Anyway, my favourite room. Now there are other floors, um, they're not renovated uh, and they're not really open to the public. But we have been up there and it is fun. Uh, but they want to keep the hotel, the, the chateau this size because it keeps its nature. We've just finished, I believe, the west wing of the house. And we're now going into the opposite side of the house, around the spiral staircase, to see some more suites. Huge ceilings. Romance suite. So this is a room often chosen by the couple as their bridal suite. Just love this linen flock. Um, and I presume a bathroom, yes. With a gorgeous bath. Great views out of your bath. Another tower suite. And, uh, in the, one of these rooms, we'll get a picture out of, of the back. Madam R's suite, the original lady owner of the house. This was her suite and it's magnificent. Come and have a look at the view. This bedroom has an annex with another bed in it. Hall again. No, Brett, please, please. Okay. We're back in the entrance hall again, and, and Brett is tinkling on the old ivory in the grand piano. Uh, as we're in a chateau, in a castle, in a French castle, we're now going to show you the basement, the cellar, um, which is just architecturally stunning. It's one of those places where you can explore and explore and explore and keep finding new things. It's magnificent. Yes. This room is dedicated to the spa, but you can't really see too much at the moment. They have their own spa in this 
glorious basement, this glorious cell. And here we have the original house kitchen. If, if you could smell, you would smell the burnt, uh, the fireplace. Lovely. I can imagine the stories this room could tell. For me, it would be one of my favourite rooms of the house because it would always be warm, with the fire always burning. And I'd live here. I would live here. Opposite, there is an ante room, kind of sitting room. Small private dining room. And then in other rooms, there's storage rooms. There was a place where they cured their own meat, hung their, what, what they were hunting and cured. Um, and, and the house uses a lot of them for storage and, and different things. We have the magnificent house. Behind us, we're still talking about bedrooms and suites. There are, there is, there are gatehouses. In the gatehouses, there's two bedrooms, um, which sound rather lovely and exciting. But in the coach house, there is a further 10 bedrooms that can sleep 22, and a breakfast bar with it, and chill out outside, and a fireplace. Now the breakfast bar has been converted to a restaurant in the winter. I suppose we show the kitchens as well. Bedrooms first, then kitchen, breakfast bar, then kitchen. And I'm just going to let Salvador do a lot of the, the whizzing around, otherwise it'll be a bit boring. We'll show you three or four bedrooms. They're all relatively the same, okay? Imagine waking up to this. And the breakfast bar 